Speaking of mega minds and intelligence, joining us now <laughs> on the Deseret First Credit Union that big Hotline of a head. <laughs> is the BYU football or director of football operations, John Swift, who uh, really in a lot of ways with Billy Nixon was a huge part of building this amazing locker room. John, thanks for joining us today. How are you? I'm good, man. Thanks for that uh, nice introduction. You guys are too kind with the old mega mind and smarts <laughs> comments. Uh, appreciate that. Hey, we're doing what we can. Okay, John, take us to the beginning of this project. When did the conversation really ramp up about doing this? Man, the conversation for this happened um, even preceding this past season. Um, you know, we, we had a lot of players who came to us with concerns about a number of things that they felt were just behind with our program and Kalani has built a culture here where this is really a player led team. And so, you know, we're always open to these, these conversations and suggestions and even have a leadership council of players that we rely on to get a pulse on the program. And so over a year ago, they came to us and said, look, we really do need to upgrade things. It's time. And that's when the conversation started. And our vice president, um, Keith Vorking was great about, um, sitting down with those same players and having that conversation as well as Tom Homo and, uh, they got the ball rolling. And they were able to uh, then dip into what was a um, endowment fund that was put in place for this building and for this facility. And uh, the rest is history, man. Then we started rolling, looking at the best companies to design these lockers and locker rooms and um, pulled the players and uh, figured out what they wanted in a locker room and threw it all together. Um, and so, you know, from, from then to now, it feels like it's been a whirlwind, but um, everyone's been really great. And uh, we're happy to finally have it done. It's been a long time coming. Well, it looks amazing, and yeah, 17 years since the you know when it was first built, and now the first remodel. It just looks amazing. What were some of the inspirations and motivations behind what you guys did? We looked at a number of different um, Power Five locker rooms, as well as some of the G5 locker rooms, and um, mainly for how the lockers should be laid out in terms of compartments, storage, all that kind of stuff. Um, in terms of design, we really loved the sleek modern look of Penn State's locker room. Plus their color scheme was very similar to ours. Um, but then we just really, the, the main things we wanted to hit were functionality wise, what did our players need and what did they want? Um, I've seen a lot of comments in, in a lot of people's comments about the fact that we still have shuffle boards in the locker room. <laughs> our players are all about the shuffle board, man. We only had one before the locker room renovation and it, there was always lines waiting to play it. So we had to bring in a second one. So they're all about the shuffle board for anyone who's asking why we put shuffle boards in there. Um, that was an important, that was an important aspect of it. John Swift, director of football operations at BYU with us on BYU Sports Nation. Take us to the moment that the players finally saw it and that reaction. What was your perspective in that moment? Man, it was unreal. Um, I, I was smiling and laughing watching your guys' stills of uh, the players reacting to it. I actually was up in the team room with them, letting them know we would be bringing them down now to see it, and they were all excited. And I waited till they all cleared down the stairwell. So I wasn't actually in there when the first ones walked through and saw it, but I could hear them. You could hear them through the floor. They were excited, and, and I knew when I could hear them screaming and, and hollering from through the floor that uh, we had done the right thing. And then when I saw these videos of them reacting, man, it was, this is what it's all about. This was for them. It wasn't for anyone else besides these guys who work so hard and who deserve this. And uh, we're just so excited that, that now they can finally move into it and make it their home. So it's the student athlete building locker room, the one they use the most. We talked about how Lavelle Edwards Stadium is a different locker room. Obviously, that's a project, you know, at some point that will require renovation as well. But what doesn't? Everything, everyone wants a renovation at some point. So it's not just the locker room area for the players, though. There were other spaces that you guys redid, too. Tell us about those areas. And we're looking forward to talk, uh, talking live with Jason and, and walking around. Yeah, um, I'm excited for you guys to see some of those other areas. Some of them still have a few loose ends that need tied up, which is partly why you guys probably haven't seen photos or video of those up to this point. But uh, the coaches' locker room area, which houses our full-time coaches, our strength coaches, our support staff, our GAs, and our analysts, was redone as well. Um, it was it was dated much like the the players' locker room was. We also redid the alumni locker room. We feel there's a strong importance for us to make a connection with all those guys. They're always here working out. We want to give them a nice, comfortable place to be, and so we redid that area as well. They'll have their own um, name place, just like the players have, um, that will be designated for them to come and work out and have their own home place. And then uh, the equipment room also got a facelift, which is nice. We want it to not look more like a workspace as much as just an extension of the locker room, a place where the BYU history, 
as well as a wow factor can be present, much like the locker room and the Nike gear display wall. Yeah, we love what the uh, Vandy homies did, uh, you know, with the metallic jerseys. That was super cool. Tell me more about the Those NFL. Awesome. Yeah, that was great. The alumni locker room. So I, I read this and clarify this. If does every how many NFL guys have a locker room in there? Is it is it current guys in the NFL? So it gets a little bit tricky. So that's a good question. We, we have made up about 26 nameplates, but there's only 12 lockers in there. So whenever we know one is around, what's going to happen is we're going to switch up and put up their locker nameplate in there so that they have their own space. But the, it's a good problem to have too many guys in the NFL. <laughs> and uh, we're, currently, we're currently there. So we're just going to take care of them when they're here and make sure they have their own place to, to set up shop when they're here working out. He is the director of football operations at BYU, John Swift. How long did you have to keep the team away from the area while it was under construction so that you could keep everything secretive? We, uh, we had them cleared out since early April of the locker room, and they haven't moved in until yesterday. And so they were out for a significant amount of time working out out of duffel bags and just going home after their workouts and bringing their own water and going home to shower. Um, so it's been an interesting two and a half or three months for these guys. Um, I, I would be lying if I didn't say there was a few guys who, who tried to peek their heads in and get a sneak peek <laughs> that we had to kick out. A little too curious, but uh, they, they did a pretty good job all around making it be a surprise. So it was exciting for him to see for the first time. John, we were discussing, yeah. is this a game changer for BYU football? How do you feel about this? I think it is. I, I think, um, you know, a lot of the research has shown that it's not necessarily facilities that make the difference um, at the end of the day with recruiting. And, and I know that Kalani would, would hope that guys aren't picking us just because of a facility, but it certainly helps to at least be on par and better um, than a lot of the people you're competing with for recruits. And so now we feel that we're in a place where our players have a comfortable place to be, they have a place that they love, and they, we have a place that we can show off and have a little bit of a wow factor just to add on top of everything else we're trying to sell with our program. So I think it will help to make a big difference in um, turning the tide for some of the guys who may have not been considering coming here. The feedback, at least as far as we can tell on social media, has been overwhelmingly positive, just a ton of excitement. But you mentioned the shuffleboards. Maybe you got a little trash there. Did you get any other negative feedback about anything besides the shuffleboards? We, 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 the only things that I saw were shuffleboards and the showers. So, uh, <laughs> you, you know, I, I, had to, I had to laugh about those, but our guys don't seem to mind, you know, and it was a capacity thing. So with those showers, we would have lost out on eight shower heads if we didn't have that middle bank. So we were, we were uh, playing a numbers game there. Listen, tree of life, right? Everyone that went to the uh, MTC knows the deal. Hey, although, although in Sao Paulo, used to it. yeah, in Sao Paulo, it wasn't that way. I guess I got lucky. Um, <laughs> Lavelle Edwards Stadium, that locker room. Are there plans? Are there discussions for something like uh, a renovation there in the future? We don't have anything major on on the docket right now. We are doing a minor renovation in there. Um, actually, moving where the coaches' locker room is with where the trainers are going to be just for better accessibility for our trainers. So there are little things that are taking place here and there, and those rooms that are getting moved around will get a facelift. Um, and they did some upgrades pretty recently, actually, in that home locker room, um, putting in a new speaker system, doing some repainting and things that really freshened it up. We're in there six games um, out of a year, really six days, and sometimes just two additional days for scrimmage and things. So right now it's just not an area that we feel necessary to put funds to as opposed to other areas that, that really could have an impact on the program right now. John, congratulations on an amazing project. We appreciate the time and the insight into uh, what went into this, and we can't wait to see it with our own eyes. Yeah, happy to walk you guys through it. We'll see you guys in a bit.